Hello artists! Today in art class we're learning about artist Keith Herring. He's a really really fun artist. We're going to be listening to the story Keith Herring, the boy who just kept drawing. And you're going to see lots of his fun and exciting artwork all throughout the book. And when we're done, we're going to make our own Keith Herring inspired picture. So I hope you're ready to have some fun and learn about artist Keith Herring. Keith Herring, The Boy Who Just Kept Drawing by K.A. Herring and illustrated by Robert Newbecker. Keith Herring made art everywhere. What would he do with this blank space? There was a boy named Keith. When he was little, his father taught him how to draw dogs and fish and funny things. His dad would draw a line, then Keith would draw one. Soon the whole page would be full. From that time on, Keith never stopped drawing. In elementary school, while taking tests, Keith doodled on the edge of his paper. When he handed in his work, his teachers would ask, why did you doodle on this important paper? Keith didn't answer. He went back to his desk and just kept drawing. Sometimes Keith invited his friends to draw in his backyard clubhouse. Keith made symbols and said each one represented a letter of the alphabet. His friends asked, why do you use symbols to write? Keith drew more symbols. It was his way of answering their question. He encouraged his friends to join him. As a teenager, Keith liked to draw in his bedroom with music playing loud. He would draw on every piece of paper he could find. His mother had to yell over the music. Why can't you turn that music down and go outside to ride your bike? But Keith had sold his bike to buy art supplies, so he answered, Look at the cool drawings I did. And he just kept drawing. When Keith was in high school, he won his first prize for his art. A successful couple from town offered to buy his drawing. Keith said, no thank you. If you enjoy my art, you may hang it on your wall. No charge. Keith's sisters were shocked. Why didn't you take the money, they asked. Keith shrugged. He just wanted to keep drawing. Keith graduated from high school and went to the big city of Pittsburgh to a school that would teach him about art. There were boys on the street trying something new, break dancing. He liked the crazy shapes of their bodies as they turned and flipped on the ground. While the music played loud, Keith started drawing wiggly lines. His teachers asked him, why are you drawing pictures that look like scrambled bodies? This is not what we told you to draw. Keith knew how to draw. He just wanted to draw in different ways, and he kept drawing. Keith moved to the huge city of New York when he was 20, so he could draw with other artists. He started to draw all over the city on walls, on sidewalks, and on paper that hung on lamp posts. His drawings were washed away by the rain or torn down by street cleaners. Other artists asked Keith, why do you draw in places where your pictures are erased? Keith didn't hear them. He was searching for another wall so he could keep drawing. Keith got a job delivering packages and sometimes rode the subway. One day, he saw a panel of black paper on the wall in a station. He rushed outside to buy chalk and came back and began to draw. The white chalk made bright, smooth lines on the black paper. Day after day, Keith filled the empty panels in the subway stations with art. Soon people who, were riding, who rode the subway were looking for the white chalk drawings. No one knew the name of the artist, but his drawings were easy to recognize. People asked him, why are you drawing here? What do your pictures mean? 
Keith said, what do you see? You decide what they mean. Where Keith lived, there was trash on the street and people didn't always say hello to each other. One day, he and his friends cleaned up 20 bags of garbage in front of a long wall. Then Keith painted square faces with smiles and body shapes dancing upside down. The neighbors liked the drawings and stopped to say thank you. A policeman came by and lectured Keith. Why did you do this? I have to give you a ticket because you didn't get permission. Keith paid the fine and just kept drawing. Soon people wanted to see more of Keith's drawings and he was asked to display his work in an art gallery. Art was hung from floor to ceiling and in between he painted on the walls. Keith invited everyone to come and enjoy his work. All of Keith's artwork sold. The gallery owner asked him, what are you gonna do with all this money? Keith said, I read in the newspaper that there are kids who don't have enough to eat. I, don't ha I didn't have this money yesterday and I was happy. If I don't have it tomorrow, I'll still be happy. All children need to eat. I'll send the money to them. The gallery owner gasped, why? Keith just smiled and started to draw again. Now people were inviting Keith to draw in famous museum, museums and exhibit in galleries all over the world. He was proud that he'd become a successful artist, but wherever he went, Keith insisted he paint a mural so everyone could enjoy his work, not just the people who had money to buy it. During a visit to Paris, France, Keith painted on the outside of a children's hospital, six stories high. Newspaper reporters came to take pictures and asked, why did you paint at the hospital? Do you think it will make the sick children feel better? Keith didn't have time to answer. He had to finish the painting. When the Statue of Liberty was 100 years old, Keith drew an outline of the famous statue on a huge piece of vinyl fabric. Then he asked 900 kids to help him finish the drawing. Keith told them, draw anything, whatever you want. No one can say it's bad or good. It's yours. When the giant painting was displayed, people were amazed to see what Keith and the kids made. But the art critics couldn't understand why a famous artist was drawing with kids. But you know Keith, he just kept drawing. Keith painted all over the world. He would draw on anything, anytime, anywhere. Wherever he went and whatever he did, he would not stop. He just kept drawing. Now everyone wanted to know, and together they shouted, why? Why do you draw all the time? Why do you give your artwork away? Why do you draw on buildings and on people, on clothing, on furniture, on subway walls, on cars, on skateboards, on walls that belong to no one, and on things to be thrown away? Why do you draw on everything? Keith stopped drawing just for a moment and answered, I draw all the time because there are many spaces to fill. I give my drawings away to help make the world a better place. I draw everywhere because everyone needs art. Then Keith turned back to the street, took a piece of chalk from his pocket, and just kept drawing. At the back of the book, there are some pictures of him as he was growing up. And at the very, very back of the book, there's a picture of him as an adult. He, um, he was born in 1958 and grew up in Cutstown, Pennsylvania. And then he died in uh, 1990. These are the artwork that was in the book. Lots and lots of artwork that he made.
you're gonna need a piece of paper for our project today. And we're gonna turn it the tall way. And you will need a pencil. And then you'll need a black marker, preferably. Um, I would rather you have a black marker if possible, but if you don't, you can use a black crayon or you can use a, um, even maybe a ballpoint pen like that that's black. All right, and then we'll also need um, one other color, but that'll be your choice. So we're gonna draw today a little bit in the style of Keith Haring. And he was very well known for drawing people, but people that didn't have faces. It was really just an outline. So we're gonna um, draw a couple people here. So I'm gonna have you start first, um, about just a little lower than the middle of your paper. Start by drawing a curvy line like a rainbow. And then we're gonna draw a line that goes up this way, and then another line that goes up this way. And then I'm gonna have you draw another line next to each of those lines. So this is gonna be the person's arms. And for hands, we're keeping it really simple, just like Keith Haring did. We're not gonna draw the fingers, we're just drawing a little shape. We're gonna draw their, the body coming down. And then we're gonna make our person look like they're kind of dancing almost. So we're gonna draw a line out and line down. And then over here, we're just gonna draw a straight line and then we're gonna draw a line down and a really simple line for the foot, or shape for the foot. On this side, you can kind of make, you can bend the leg a little bit too. And then add a really simple shape for the foot. All right, now on this side over here, we're gonna draw another person. And right about the same level, we're gonna add their head. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna draw a line that's kinda like a um, rainbow line. We're gonna draw a line up. And another line up. And another line next to that one for the arms. Draw those simple shapes for the hands. Line down for the chest and the back. And we're gonna bend the leg here and draw another line next to it. You can add a little foot and if we bring this line for the back over, we can just draw one line down and add a little foot. Yeah, so it looks like two people and they have their arms up. So you might be wondering, what are we gonna do with the rest of this paper? Well, one of the, um, one of the paintings that he used to draw quite a bit had people holding up um, a heart. So we are going to work on that. We're going to draw him holding up a heart. So, or draw them holding up a heart. So it's going to be really big. You're going to want to start at the top and come down just a little ways. You can put a little dot there. And if you want to, you can even add a little dot down here. And that will be the, the bottom of the heart. So you know where to stop. And we're gonna draw a curvy line that goes up like a candy cane and comes down, but goes behind the hand and down there. And then we're going to go here at the top, draw it like a 
like a candy cane going this way, down and down, just like that. All right, and then we're gonna take either our crayon, if you have the black crayon or black marker or your pen, or if you don't have any of that, you can just use your pencil and we're gonna make our lines thicker. Kind of like, think about like um, if you were drawing in a coloring book, how the lines are usually, um, they usually have a black outline and they're sometimes a little bit thicker. Um, so go ahead and start tracing. If you have um, a black Crayola marker too, that would work too. When you're done tracing, you're going to use that black um, marker or crayon or pencil to add lines that bring attention to the heart. So we're going to put little lines and you can have them, they can be different sizes, you know, some could be small, some could be a little bit longer around the heart. even have them kind of going off the edge of your paper. They're not actually touching the heart. And then we're also going to add a few lines around our people to show that they're moving. And these are called action lines. Go ahead and add some action lines. When you're all done, you're gonna find either a crayon or a marker or both, and you're gonna color in the heart. And you can choose any color for the heart. Um, if you want to, um, you can make the heart more than one color, which I think is what I'm gonna do. And I'm using marker, but you can use crayons or colored pencils or a combination. And you don't have to color in the people um, unless you really want to, but you can just leave them black and white because that's often what, um, what Keith Haring would do.
done. I mean, if there's anything else you want to add, you certainly can, but it's okay to leave it just like that too. When you're all done with your drawing, you'll have your heart colored in. And like I said, if you wanted to color in the people in the picture, you can, but you don't have to. You can leave it just as is. I hope you had fun learning about our special artist today, Keith Herring.